Good evening and thank you for watching Times News with me, Chawes Banda. But first, the headlines. The Malawi Electoral Commission describes as encouraging the turnout in Tuesday's by-elections as vote counting is underway. About 129,993 Form 4 students have started sitting for their Malawi School Certificate of Education examinations. And the Minister of Health, Kumbize Kandodo Chiponda, says the country has reduced the number of new HIV infections by 66%. We have these and other stories to stay with us. To our first story, counting of votes is currently underway in the just concluded by-elections that have taken place in three constituencies and one ward on Tuesday. The Malawi Electoral Commission Chairperson Chifundo Kachali has described the turnout as encouraging. He said the turnout was between 40 to 50 percent. Kachali was speaking at Zenza polling center in Deza central constituency. He also added that there were no reports of any violence in the elections. The impressions are quite encouraging. Uh, for example, to the few centers I've been to, the voter turnout so far, but we have over between 40 and 50 percent voter turnout, which is quite encouraging. So we're quite happy, and uh, there are no incidents of any kind that have uh, uh, been reported which would disturb the voting, and uh, the commission is quite delighted with that progress. Official results of the by of the by-elections are expected by Tuesday. Neither violent incident nor anomaly on the voters' roll has been reported on the day of polling from the 36 centers during the Kota Kota Northeast by-elections as voting closed at 6 p.m. Met Commissioner Emmanuel Fabiano, who, ex who inspected several polling centers in the constituency, was impressed with how the polling was conducted. Pilanika Jinziri is in Kota Kota and now files us this report. Before voting was officially opened at 6 a.m., people had already started queuing, eager to choose candidates of their choice. Both the elderly and the youth showed up at all the 36 polling centers to vote. Of particular interest was Gogo Franson Carpenter, who endured a kilometer walk to exercise his democratic right at Liwala's polling center. May Commissioner Emmanuel Fabiano was impressed with the turnout of voters in a constituency that has 22,225 registered voters. Polling started at 6 o'clock. And normally we have a lot of people at the beginning of the day and they actually came in large numbers. And we expect a lot more people at the end of the day, uh, in between people becoming uh, voting and going as we have observed. So, so far, there has been no issue, no problem whatsoever. Nine candidates are competing for the seat that fell vacant after the death of Democratic Progressive Party DPP parliamentarian Arthur Lunji Chanjo on July 13, 2021. They include President Lassas Chakwira, advisor on persons with disabilities and abinism, Overston Kondowe, who is representing Malawi Congress Party, MCP. Aleke Kamangen is the United Democratic Front candidate. UTM has Simomichidoti, while Patrick Kampadido is carrying Afodis Manto. DPP has fielded Silva Aisha, while Gifting Buna, Zelita Banda, and Franklin Yonamu are independent candidates. During the 2019 election, DPP and MCP won two seats each, while UDF secured one. As earlier indicated, the official results for the by-elections are expected by Wednesday. Well, voting has ended well in Mzimba East constituency as no serious violence has been reported. This is according to majority of the presiding officers as Sam Kalimira reports from Mzimba. Voting has ended well in Mzimba East constituency as no serious violence has been reported. This is according to majority of the presiding officers. According to the officers, the only hitch they were faced with was that some candidates wanted to vote though they did not register in the constituency. The candidates are Wesley Kumwenda of Democratic Progressive Party and Wachepa Piri of Alliance for Democracy Afford. Apparently, other candidates failed to cast their vote due to the same issue and these are Donix Mova of Malawi Congress Party and John Piri of Freedom Party. Gift Simkonda is the presiding officer at Bawa Polling Center. There have never been serious challenges though. Just a matter of uh, some people were transferred out. But uh, I think maybe they forgot. 
so they thought they would vote again. But then you have the register that indicates that someone has to has been transferred out and they cannot vote here. So yes, so we do tell them to go, to go back. So this is a parliamentary election. Some may be registered far away in other constituencies, which they are not supposed to vote here. Yeah, so, so far there are no major challenges. Meanwhile, Moses Nkandawide, an electoral observer from Church and Society of Livingstonia Synod, complained that most of the voters were elder people, an indication that most youth shunned voting. The elections have gone on quite well. Um, there's been peaceful atmosphere. I think that's the most important thing. But generally, um, I'm a little bit concerned with the conduct of the youth because it seems that many centers that I've been to, the youth are not there in terms of coming in the large numbers and cast their vote and choose a person of their choice. So we've left it to the elderly, particularly women. Um, and a few men here. Currently, vote counting has started in all the 34 centers in the constituency. The constituency study center has been set at Mzimbaboma. Other candidates who were contesting in the race are Christopher Mnyenyembe of UTM and Ruben Nguenya, who is independent. And in the eastern region, voter turnout left little to impress at Chimalire Ward in Balaka South constituency, where about 13,000 people had registered to vote for their next councillor after the former Joseph Daniel died. Visits to some, some of the centres revealed what had been portrayed earlier in the day, that less, that less people were casting their votes. At Makanjira polling centre, for instance, less than 600 people out of about 1,380 registered voters had voted by 6 p.m. as Gary Samati reports from Balaga. Voters turned out at Chimwari Award in Balaka left little to impress during the by-elections. Times Group's visits to more centers throughout the day indicated that less people had cast their votes. By the time polling stations closed at 6 p.m., the number of people who voted at more centers barely passed half of the total registered voters at the centers. One of the presiding officers at Makanjira Primary School, which is one of the centers, Tafwaji Kaunda, explains that the area had indeed received less voters. Since morning, we had many people on the line waiting for us to prepare for the elections. We had almost 50 people waiting for us. We opened the center at 6 a.m. and we started voting at 6 a.m. But till now, we are having people but not like in the morning our register is uh, maybe it's like uh, i can say 1.4 or 1.3 but uh, we have 400 people voting nonetheless the area had an election free from hassles people in the area had cast their votes following the death of then councillor joseph daniel 10 contestants await to hear their fate as vote counting is currently underway about 128,993 Form 4 students have started seating for the Malawi School Certificate of Education, MSCE. Malawi National Examinations Board, Manib, is administering the exams amid rumors of a leakage which the board has dispelled. In Zuzu, most schools have put in place stringent measures to curb cheating and other malpractices. Feston Malekezo went around some schools and he now reports. It was a busy morning for most secondary schools in Mzuzu City as Form 4 candidates were set for the national examinations. The students started with practical papers in their respective schools. A visit at Garodo Secondary School, St. Peter's Catholic Secondary School and Target Private Secondary School Tuesday morning found the students in last-minute touches. Some were receiving their examination IDs, others were studying, and others were in discussions. A 17-year-old, Vitumbiko Nirenda, from Target Private Secondary School, tells us she is ready for the examinations. Uh, I'm prepared because I have been studying hard since, since last year up to this time. So I'm prepared, fully prepared, and I want to score 20 points below. And that's my goal. Her counterpart, Prince Kagwira, a journalist in the making from Katoro Secondary School, also says has been preparing for the examinations. He is ambitious he will score below 17 points. Very much well prepared because 
ever since I got into secondary school, I've always wanted to be a graduate. You know? At least 128,968 candidates are expected to sit this year's MSCE. And in Lilongwe, Taunga Sabola speaks with the head teacher at Waira Secondary School, Mr. Stephen Banda. So far, everything has said on a higher note. Uh, we have said 92 students who are sitting for a graduate platform. The exams have started on time. The scripts are enough for all the candidates. And again, we have the IDs for them. The investigators are already in place. So far, so good. Thank you very much. Since we are indeed in the pandemic, we have made it clear that all students will have masks. The investigators have their masks. And before they enter the examination room, they are washing their hands to make sure that no one contracts the COVID-19 virus. The MSc exams have started without challenges in Blantyre. A snap check in some schools show most students spent enough time to prepare, as Thomas Kacheri now reports. The Malawi School Certificate of Education MSE examinations in the southern region started well in most schools. Some of the candidates Times has spoken to from Chichiri Secondary School, packed Blanta Secondary School BSAs, say they were ready for the examination. Uh, we've tried gathering any information we can find. We've studied beyond imagination. We've asked teachers for any help wherever we needed it. Uh, we well prepared. Yeah, that's what I can say. The 2021 MSCE is being administered amid this COVID-19 pandemic, a situation that has pushed schools to be strict on preventive measures. According to Public Relations Officer for Manib, Miami Kuchiwaya, 128,993 students are sitting for the 2021 MSCE examination. Chiwaya added that there will be no room for cheating as security has been tightened. You're watching the Tuesday's evening bulletin here on Times Television. We'll be back shortly after this break. <laughs> We all start differently, but we can all start with the strongest protection. Because some start early, others start late. Some from little homes, others from big ones. Some start together or all on their own. It doesn't matter how you start as long as you start strong with new Colgate's Maximum Cavity Protection. Now with fluoride plus Arginine for four times more strengthening power so that you can give them the strongest start to their day. Colgate. Start strong. Stay strong. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Showmax, Showmax. You've heard the name, but what exactly is Showmax? Well, it's an online streaming service that's packed with the very best in international and local entertainment, ready and waiting for you to watch when you want, where you want. Plus, with three data settings and a download option, you also have power to manage your time and your budget. Yeah! So what are you waiting for? Go to Showmax.com and sign up today. Welcome back to the news. Continuing with the bulletin, Minister of Health Kumbize Kandoro Chiponda says the country has reduced the number of new HIV infections by 66% from the year 2010 to 2021. Chiponda was speaking when she presided over the official opening of the 2021 Joint Annual Review of the National Response to HIV and AIDS organized by the National AIDS Commission. We have a report from Wesigausi. 
The country has lost approximately 1.4 million people due to HIV-related illnesses. Chiponda says they have managed to reduce the number of new HIV infections per year from 56,000 in 2010 to 19,000 in 2021. In case of case management, how are we doing? Where is it that we can improve? In terms of funding uh, towards the HIV AIDS response, as government, what, uh, how are we doing? And also, what is the stake of our, our partners? So we look at all these issues, but we also look at emerging issues as well, uh, the effects of the COVID-19, uh, how has it affected our performance in the fight against uh, uh, the HIV AIDS pandemic. UNAIDS Country Director Nuh Hasise uproots the country for improving significantly in HIV responses. But the joint annual review is, is, is a meeting that helps us really ask ourselves some very difficult questions. Difficult questions like, really, what do these results mean to us? Are we leaving any people behind? How effective are our responses and what can we do better? Chairperson of the Parliamentary Committee on Nutrition, HIV and AIDS, Delsi Gumba, says as a committee they'll make sure they robe for more resources towards HIV and AIDS fighting. We are interested but in a sense that we even initiated and approved uh, a legislation, we call it uh, HIV AIDS Prevention Management Act, that was actually passed in 2018. So with this uh, and once it's being it to be implemented, obviously this is quite achievable. This year's meeting was held under the theme towards ending AIDS by 2030 through sustainable epidemic control, a people-centered approach. JTI has invested about $100 million in maintenance of its factory. Speaking in Lilongwe, when Minister of Agriculture Lobin Lowe visited the factory, JTI Managing Director John Gauner said the future of tobacco in the country remains bright. Kumbo Kaliwo has compiled this report read by Taonga Sabola. Gauma says tobacco has many potentials which just need to be explored. He further said the government should help in building the processing capacity to maximize the value addition while eliminating non valuable adding taxes and levies. The global supply and demand situation has declined over the years and will continue to do so. So from a global perspective, we still believe uh, volumes will decline. From a Malarian perspective, we have the opportunity to build a niche market for our Malawian tobacco. And this will come through us all in the supply chain addressing the challenges, whether it be uh, our supply chain due diligence, whether it be efficiencies in the crop. And Malawi is well positioned to leverage this. So I see a bright future for Malawian tobacco. Minister of Agriculture, Lobin Lowe, says the country should concentrate on growing crops which should complement tobacco, not getting away with tobacco as the country still rely on the tobacco. On the issue of waiving some taxes, Lowe says the minister will wait until parliament reviews some laws. What I invested one million US dollars in maintaining the factory. This alone talks about volumes of the future of uh, our tobacco and that to the investors. They are saying the future of our tobacco still remains bright. Malawi has cumulatively earned 997.1 million US dollars from tobacco sales in 2021, which is 13% higher than what the country generated in 2020. UNICAF University and the Malawi Police Service have signed a memorandum of understanding which will enable police officers to have a scholarship scheme at the university. The signing ceremony took place at the Malai Police Service Headquarters in Lilongwe on Tuesday. Rebecca Jimjeka has more in this report, read by Wesley Gausi. The MOU presents hope to the Malawi Police Service as an organization, as it is expected that the partnership will contribute to the continuing professional development of officers of Malawi Police Service. Yolamu says the partnership has come at the right time. Oh no. As a Malawi Police Service, we have various fields, we have various sections of the organization, and they need various courses as well. Such being the case, that's why we want to go into partnership as many universities as possible, so that these people should have choice of where to go. But then the basic line is that these universities have to be accredited. 
and uh, having UNISCAF as one of the accredited universities, it is a benefit to our organization. On his part, the Chancellor for UNICAF University, Robert Lidley, says the partnership will contribute to the continuing professional development of officers of the Malawi Police Service. It's a very important institution for the country, and uh, as the Deputy Inspector General said, uh, anything we can do to facilitate access to higher education, higher learning within the Malawi Police Service and beyond, that's our mission. That's what we want to do. The partnership will allow the Malawi Police Service to continue their education with bachelor degrees, master's degrees, even doctoral programs. Well, that's all we had for you for now. But before we go, the headlines once again. The Malawi Electoral Commission describes as encouraging the turnout in Tuesday's by-elections as counting of votes is underway. About 128,993 Form 4 students have started sitting for the Malawi School Certificate of Education examinations. And the Minister of Health, Kumbize Kandodo Chiponda, says the country has, re has reduced the number of new HIV infections by 66%. Remember, you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website, www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page, Times 360 Malawi, subscribing to 1895, and following us on Twitter at Times 360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly. Observe social and physical distance, mask up, and get vaccinated to prevent COVID-19. Please do stay safe. You have been with me, Jawes Banda. Goodbye. Majawa with the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow. Expect partly cloudy to cloudy conditions with thundery activities over more areas due to a convergence of cool and moist east area mass as well as southeast area flow. Lake waters of Lake Malawi, Malombe, Chilwa and Juda are expected to be rough. In the Shire Valley, expect mild conditions with few thundery showers tonight and during morning. Partly cloudy in the afternoon. In the southern highlands expect windy conditions with thundery rain showers over a few areas tonight and in the morning. Partly cloudy with few rain showers during the afternoon. In the central areas mild conditions with isolated thundery showers tonight and during morning. Partly cloudy with thundery rain showers in the afternoon. In the lecture areas expect windy and cloudy conditions with thundery rain showers tonight and during morning. Partly cloudy with thundery showers over a few areas in the afternoon. In the northern area, school conditions with few rain showers tonight and during morning. Warm to hot and partly cloudy conditions with thundery showers over a few areas during the afternoon. Focus temperatures in Gabo minimum 25 degrees Celsius and maximum 34 degrees Celsius. Blanta minimum 19 degrees Celsius and maximum 26 degrees Celsius. Lilongwe minimum 19 degrees Celsius and maximum 29 degrees Celsius. Mangoshi minimum 25 degrees Celsius and maximum 32 degrees Celsius. Huawei in Mzuzu minimum 16 degrees Celsius and maximum 27 degrees Celsius. Wind, easteries becoming southeasteries. Forecast for Thursday, partly cloudy with thundery rain showers. Let us wind up with the times for sunrise and sunset for tomorrow, 27th October 2021. Mzuzu sunrise 14 minutes past 5 and sunset 17 minutes to 6. Lilongwe sunrise 13 minutes past 5 and sunset 14 minutes to 6. And in blunt air sunrise 5, 6 minutes past 5 and sunset 18 minutes to 6. That is the weather forecast. I'm Matilda Majawa. Have a lovely night. <laughs>